I'd like to introduce Candace McNaughton, who is a K-12 graduate. We'll make sure. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Scott. Um, so I'm Candace McNaughton, uh, and I'm from Vanderbilt University. Um, I think, you know, um, hopefully what you'll get out of this, oh, thank you. Um, I think part of my role uh, in this is to just sort of describe uh, the opportunities that uh, were available to me in my experience. I was fortunate in terms of timing. Um, <coughs> I was fortunate that uh, I graduated at a time when the K-12 uh, programs were uh, available. So this is just one example uh, for residents uh, and for folks coming up uh, through the ranks uh, and for um, potentially you know, early and, and, and late career um, or later career uh, mentors for pathways that are an, uh, an opportunity. Uh, because one of the things that I found, especially early on in emergency medicine, residency and training, uh, was that um, it was difficult for me to visualize where I needed to go and what the next steps were to get into a research career. So this is just one uh, example. Um, I have to disclose, um, uh, mm. I'm fortunate to disclose uh, my um, academic uh, conflicts of interest. So I'm fortunate to have funding, uh, and, and my research has been funded by the NIH in the form of a K-12, as well as through an individual K-23. Um, so, uh, one thing that uh, is becoming, uh, is, is obvious, I think, to all of us, I and that is that in terms of uh, emergency care research, the earlier that we introduce trainees uh, to the opportunities that are available and introduce this as an option, uh, at least it will be something they consider, because uh, at least, um, so as a medical student, I went to Washington and St. Louis, where research is just sort of part of everything, like everybody's just sort of expected to do that. And um, that was harder to uh, see embedded, at least initially clinically, uh, for emergency medicine um, as I changed institutions. So for example, I also work at the VA, and there it's a, you know, a very foreign uh, idea that emergency medicine doctors would even do research. So it's, it's uh, something that the earlier we introduce it to trainees, um, uh, and, and beginning with the end in mind, so as I said, um, starting out in a research career, it was difficult for me to plot out how to get into a successful research career without knowing what even the opportunities were. So this was um, a really, it, I got lucky in a lot of ways and I was very fortunate in my mentors. So briefly uh, about uh, my career path to get to where I am now uh, as an assistant professor at Vanderbilt, um, having uh, just completed a K-23, so I did my emergency medicine residency at Vanderbilt. Actually, having transitioned, I started out uh, in anesthesia, realized I made a mistake and went back through the match. Uh, so I did a total of four years for residency, inadvertently. Um, and then I did two years actually at the VA uh, doing a quality uh, scholar fellowship and, and got an MPH. And that's where um, I really um, was able to get enough experience doing both operations and research and realized that research is the route I wanted to go. And so uh, the MPH at Vanderbilt is a little bit different from a traditional MPH in that it's much more um, research-based. It's very, it's almost, it's in many ways similar to a, a, a master's in epidemiology rather than a traditional MPH. So uh, at that point, um, I made the decision um, to, to really focus on uh, research. And I was fortunate that I had a good uh, re uh, mentorship team. So Dr. Storo uh, was working on his R01 at that point. And, uh, allowed me to carve out a component of that that really has served as the foundation for a lot of what um, I have ended up doing. Um, so I was very fortunate to have that support available. And I was able to move from that to your VA uh, fellowship into the K-12 program uh, where I did three years. And again, was really fortunate in that um, I was able to uh, do a PhD in epidemiology with the support of the K-12 um, resources available for education. Um, and uh, because I went into the PhD with a very specific scientific question, um, I was a, an unusual student in that they didn't just assign me to a mentor. I went in with a specific question and, and used the research funds for the K-12 uh, for the dissertation, and that then served as the basis for my K-23. So it's been um, each component of training along the way has served as the foundation for the next. Um, and so for the, for the three-year K-23, uh, 
uh, again with a lot of mentorship and support locally and, um, and from Dr. Scott, um, we developed and have implemented a behavioral intervention in the emergency department and it just finished and so we're in the process of cleaning the data and working on analysis. Um, in terms of goals, I, uh, going into this, um, it, you know, like everything in life, when you look back, you uh, have a broader perspective than when you went in. So I knew that I needed career development training. I didn't really fully understand what that meant. And so again, mentorship and feedback um, were vital in that um, they really helped me hone the plan for career development at each step in both the K-12 and the K-23. Uh, and tied that in very explicitly with each of the research aims. And that's how I got, um, I did the PhD in epidemiology, also did additional training in, ironically it was addiction medicine, but really what that boils down to is behavioral change, which is medication adherence. And so um, it all uh, came together. Um, I've talked ab about this uh, as well. Um, in terms of K-23, other components that ended up being useful and things that I swore I would never use after medical school. So PKPD, pharmacokinetics and dynamics, I am still not expert at that, but uh, was able to use resources for, uh, from the K-23 in the, in the protected time to get the expertise, which I'm now using for um, work that I'm doing now in heart failure. So uh, I have to just give a quick shout out to my K-23 mentors. Uh, Dr. Rothman and uh, Sean Collins and Alan Storo, and then to the mentorship team, which is a, a, a larger group of uh, folks. So, Christiane Rumi, again, Russell Rothman, Sean Collins, Phil Levy, Bob Dittis, Neil Kropolani, and then uh, Alan and Tommy Wang. So, where I am now, I could not have gotten without them. And then, in, term of, in terms of take home messages, that I, you know, as I'm stepping back and looking at um, uh, things that I think I probably could have said the words too, but now I really have a much better understanding of uh, the environment for career development and research training is really important. And so the K-12 has been invaluable. And then moving on to a T32 where it just becomes like routine, the, like part of cardiology fellowship is that you do research and it's just expected. Um, I'm really hopeful that we'll get to that place. And so we're working on that with our residents uh, in our uh, program. Um, and then I, uh, especially looking back, <coughs> Having mentors who's really set, helped me set career, uh, career expectations and research goals that were concrete um, uh, were incredibly important and then planning ahead. So spacing out grants, conferences, you know, just sort of the daily logistics that as an emergency medicine doctor who's used to just sort of triaging things by are you bleeding, um, it was uh, a different way of approaching um, strategizing and triaging. So, and then, you know, the K-12, K-23 invaluable opportunities for collaboration, which is going to be the basis for uh, long-term career. So um, just a quick thank you again to all the folks that I really owe my career to and research uh, that's ongoing. And I'll turn the mic over.